Hey everyone, uh, we have a giveaway going on right now for all new subscribers, all the way through 100,000 subscribers. Each one of those new subscribers gets entered to win $1,000 cash. It's a real cash. You can put it in your pocket and do whatever you want with it. Uh, we also have other giveaways going on as well. $20 eShop gift card for all new subscribers in the month of August. And we have a giveaway as well for a Game Boy Grid $300 item. Uh, information on that down in the pinned comment in the description. Not doing a bunch of fancy advertising or editing for this video. So uh, sorry for not showing off the product. But one of the hardest things to do, I, I think online, offline, 80s, 90s, 70s, I don't know. Well, I was only alive. I was born in the 80s. So can't really speak you know, back to the 70s from personal experience. 80s, 90s, 2000s, 2010s, 2020s now is swallow your pride it, it, it's a difficult thing to do because i i think inherently a lot of us are stubborn now i can't speak for you of course i can only speak for what i see on the internet and uh what i see in real life but you know and for some of you the internet is as close to real life as you get and that's fine it could be also medical conditions that prevent you uh, from going out in public, you know, example, you if you are uh, immunocompromised, you know, COVID or no COVID, you probably don't go out a whole lot. I sit here and I wonder all the time what I can do to further the channel. And when I sit back and I think about how I've been reacting to people over the last, not just the last 24 hours, uh, but really the last, I don't know, eight months, nine months, uh, once I got over the fact that we got hacked and there wasn't much I could do about that, once I got past that and I started talking to people, and I've, I, I know this about myself, I can be quite blunt. I can be very crass. I can be a little full of myself, a little egotistical, if it were. When I started this channel, I mean, originally uh, back in 2008, it was not meant to be anything. It was just sort of, hey, whenever we need to host a video for Zelda Informer, uh, let's host it on YouTube because they'll host the video for free. And we tried self-hosting in the past and self-hosting was really, really expensive. Well, we had this free service from YouTube. And this is why I, I can deal with a lot of YouTube's issues and in and outs because I remember how expensive it was to self-host videos and the cost of bandwidth, something that YouTube incurs without charging me a dime. And on top of that, YouTube allows me to make money. So it's kind of crazy. So I, I, I tend not to be as critical about the platform as, as many others. But also, when I started the channel, uh, Nintendo Prime, because there was actually a separate YouTube channel called Nintendo Prime originally. That's why this channel is actually YouTube.com slash C slash Nintendo Prime TV because C slash Nintendo Prime was my original Nintendo Prime uh, channel. It basically just hosted the Nintendo Prime podcast. Now we have a separate channel for the podcast, but it basically just hosted the Nintendo Prime podcast and it got, you know, 100, 150 views uh, per podcast episode. You, most of the people just kind of meandering it over from Zelda Informer when that still existed. But when I negotiated on my exit contract at Zelda Informer with the new owner to keep the Zelda Informer YouTube channel since they still had a YouTube channel over 100,000 subscribers. I didn't feel like they really had a need for two YouTube channels. Uh, it, it was an interesting experience because I didn't know what I was going to do with the YouTube channel. Uh, when I left Zelda Informer, you know, I, was, I started working on a website on the side called Nintendo Prime. Uh, that website uh, would just post a bunch of news. Think like Go Nintendo or Nintendo Life. And... The reason I'm getting into a little bit of this is because when I started this YouTube channel and, you know, really converted this one over, uh, yeah, sure, it had a little bit of a subscriber base, but we were only getting a couple hundred views per video. And I think a lot of the attitude I have today about my YouTube channel is one that I have maintained from day one. And that is, I'm going to make whatever the hell I want to make. I'm going to do the content the way I want to do it. And I really don't care what anyone else has to say. And saying I don't care is extremely disingenuous. That's a lie to myself. I clearly care what other people have to say or I wouldn't respond to it so much, right? I obviously care. But for some reason, I have this stubborn attitude where I care and I want to prove them wrong as if what I say is going to change their opinion of my content. Even if I find their opinion isn't based in 100% factual information. It doesn't change their opinion. 
And here is what is so hard to do, to swallow that pride and admit I was wrong and I'm sorry for how I've been behaving. Now, some of you might think I have nothing to apologize for, and that's fine. Uh, for those people, this video is not really for you. This is for all the people that felt slighted by my content over the last, I don't know, however long you felt slighted for it. I guess I, I can't speak for when you first started slighting, because a lot of people used to genuinely love my, my channel and love my content. And a, a comment I made to Player Essence, because we were having a little bit of a back and forth on Twitter, just a small one. We weren't like disagreeing or arguing. We were just having a conversation. Um, and a comment I made to him really stuck in my mind. And that was, I miss when I was a small channel and nobody gave a shit what I did. And there's a huge part of me that misses that because I've been running my channel the exact same way. Sure, I can argue I've improved in you know, my editing and my audio quality and my on-camera presence, definitely improved my on-camera presence. I, I could talk about how I've improved the video quality. I, I could talk about a lot of different things that I've done along the way uh, and even gotten it to the point where my videos were shorter. This is gonna be a longer one, but. I used to have like 40 minute videos every video. I am sorry. And I'm sorry that I chose to never evolve my attitude with the channel. And I'm sorry for how I behaved towards others while the channel has grown. I have not been very receptive to people who just don't like what I do sometimes. And I say sometimes, because not all the time. Obviously, lately, it's been Switch Pro stuff has been really annoying some people. Some people want me to make more of that content, but it annoys some people because they're disappointed. And they're disappointed because, hey, last year, there was a ton of smoke around it, and it never happened. And this year, there hasn't been as much, so why am I continuing to talk about it? And it doesn't really matter what my reasons are. A lot of people assume it's for clicks and views. My channel doesn't get a lot of clicks and views. So the idea that I would make any content specifically for clicks and views is a little bit weird since I don't really get a ton of clicks and views. I get the same roughly 1,500 to 2,000 views every video. Uh, occasionally one gets a little bigger, but it's pretty random, and uh, I, I kind of move on with my day. But what, what's interesting is that the reason I create the content today is the same reason I cre started creating content five years ago, six years ago, and that's just making what I want to make. I love talking about Switch Pro behind the scenes. So why wouldn't I make videos about it, right? Like I'm always on Fami boards. I'm on uh, Reset Era or NeoGAF or Reddit, and I'm constantly talking to others about the hardware. And because of that, it inspires me to want to make more videos about it, even though a huge chunks of my audience or huge chunks of my former audience at this point don't want to hear it. And... I've been very inconsiderate of my audience on the whole. Look, I've defended myself over some things in the past, whether it's clickbait or whether it's, uh, you know, other things. I don't know. Maybe maybe a joke video I made, like the one I made to kick off the new year, where people thought I was quitting, but I really wasn't quitting. Uh, for some reason, that really upset people. It's interesting thinking about all the time that I constantly go into defense mode uh, to defend actions I feel are justified. And again, some of you might agree that, with that, but I need to be able to self-reflect and admit my faults. And I'm stubborn, and I could downright be an asshole sometimes. And I'm not trying to upset anyone. I just keep treating people like they're myself. How, what do I mean when I say that? Lots of content creators make videos I don't enjoy, but I do enjoy some of their content, enough that I subscribe to their channel. But I don't enjoy all of it. So for me, I just scroll by and nothing really upsets me. I also am someone that loves speculating about rumors, about hardware, about future stuff. I don't get tired of it. Some people get burned out, right? They enjoy rumors for a little bit, and then they just get burned out, and they don't really want to deal with rumors for a couple of years. Uh or ever again, right? And I'm not one of those people, right? I don't get burned out. I enjoy the conversation and want to keep it going. And I think in general, most people kind of 
have, have accepted the rumor aspect of the channel, right? The, the rumor prime, uh, you know, people have sort of accepted that, that, hey, there's going to be certain times during the year that there's a bunch of rumors and Nintendo Prime is going to talk about them. It's the other feedback that I'm not listening to, the constructive criticism that bothers me and what I'm is what I'm apologizing for. I need to let my niceness shine through. Believe it or not, I'm a pretty happy-go-lucky guy. If you ever met me uh, in you know outside of the internet, you would find I probably wouldn't have a single negative thing to say about you or anybody else at all. Even people who don't get along with me or don't like me or troll me, uh, you know, even people who've come after my children and said really stupid things and gave me death threats, you'll find that I'm I'm actually a pretty easygoing person. I'm pretty chill. Uh, people come at me, and, and it's really only when I feel like I need to defend something I'm passionate about that I tend to get this stubborn attitude come out. And I'm extremely passionate about my YouTube content. I didn't start YouTube to make money. I just happened to make money. I care more about making content that I enjoy. But am I really enjoying making content that leads to to dozens and dozens of negative remarks. Now, it's easy to say ignore the negativity, but it's pretty strong on certain topics. It's very clear if I made another Switch Pro video, say tomorrow, that I would get more and more and more people upset with me. Unless it was that Nintendo announced it, that's different. But besides that, it would get people really, really mad at me. And not everyone, but, but enough people that it might dominate the comment section. And I'm not listening or I haven't been listening enough and considering that I am more of a, at this point, I'm no longer can just go about my channel as I make content for me. It's an attitude that I've had for a while. And I did even a video and a live stream on this last week where I said, Hey, bottom line is I make content for me and I make what I enjoy. And that's true, but there needs to be a balance in there where I'm also considerate of your time. If I want you to subscribe to my channel and I want to grow and I want to support my family and I want to do this and I want to do that and I want to hire an editor someday and, and have these grandeur ideas of expanding the channel through multiple channels and none of that's going to happen if I'm inconsiderate of the actual audience that watches my videos. And I don't want to fall into that trap of being one of those content creators that never considers others. And I, I know it's easy for me to tell myself I'm considerate of others. I do all these giveaways. I do all this other stuff for, you know, try to support charities and, you know, all these things behind the scenes that, that I don't even care that people know about uh, just because I think it's the right thing to do. And, you know, I try to signal boost smaller content creators, Mike Odyssey and Andres Restart and um, what, what do we have? Unhelpful Yoda on and, and Mandy Lee plays. Like I, I try to signal boost some of these smaller, even Sonic Man the best before. Uh, his audio equipment was a little wonky when I had him on, but still I try to signal boost him uh, when I can. Paul Gale Network. And it, even though I do some of these things, I'm not considerate enough. I'm too bullheaded. I'm too stubborn. I'm unwilling to admit that while maybe I don't have a problem with my video, Others do, and I need to listen to why. And I need to reshape my content in a way that I'm still making content I'm passionate about. But I'm also making sure to include the audience into that content. I made a video today about Breath of the Wild 2. And it's easy enough to see why people could get upset at that content. No one seems to be upset. It has a thumbnail that says graphics update. Uh, and it says new update on Breath of the Wild 2 graphics. And then there's a, a little bit of a dash. And then it says new hardware not needed. And it's not even news. It's a discussion post. It has a single dislike. It has a 99.9% .9 like to dislike ratio. And there is not a single negative comment on that video. There's not one person saying clickbait. There's not one person um, yelling at me. There's not one person upset about the topic. There's not one person upset about the things I said in the video. There are people that disagree with some of the things I said, but they're doing it in a conversational like way. Like they legitimately want to talk about Breath of the Wild 2. They legitimately want to talk about this given topic. And what's interesting is it's a video that, you know, you could easily see 
critics coming in and yelling clickbait. Credits coming in and, and talking stupid. Credits this, credits that. Instead, I, it's constantly people saying, good video. I really enjoyed this one. This was a great discussion. More of this, please. And it makes me realize that maybe the issue this entire time hasn't been people yelling clickbait. It hasn't been any of that stuff. The issue has been I haven't considered enough what the audience wants more of. Clearly, my audience just wants me, you know, not just, but wanted me to talk more about Breath of the Wild 2. It's on their minds. They're getting anxious. They want to see it in September. They want it to come out. And so having a, a, a discussion video like this, which on the surface looks like clickbait, uh, actually ended up being something they enjoyed. And so they don't have the same complaints they would over stuff they don't enjoy. So this could have been news about a different game, and it's a game they don't want to hear about. So then they would go in there and complain. So I feel like I need to make sure that I consider you guys more. And because of that, I want you guys to go down into the comments of this video and tell me what more do you want to see me do? What kind of content do you want to see me make? What games, types of news, uh, anything would you guys like to see more of out of my channel? And I'm going to tell you right now, if anyone says game reviews, I'm not the guy for that. I'm not critical enough of video games. Uh, and maybe that's good for a review. I, I think people feel like people that aren't critical enough may do bad reviews. Uh, so I'm not so sure that I'm the best to do game reviews. Maybe someday I'll consider doing like a, a mini, a mini review or like a first impression and final impression video of, of a game. I guess that's something I could do, you know, like first impression, you know, beginning of the game, final impression when I'm done playing it, whether I beat it or not. Why did I stop playing? What are my final impressions? I feel like something like that could be cool. But that's only, you know, that's the kind of content that's only going to come around when there's games I want to do that for. Like the next game will probably be Splatoon 3, right? Like I'll have an initial impression and then, you know, maybe a month later, a, a quote unquote final impression on what I think about that game. Uh, maybe the same with, uh, you know, Sparks of Hope coming out. Maybe Pokemon, maybe Breath of the Wild. But again, that kind of content only comes around and is based on when Nintendo releases games that I want to play. Or third parties release games I want to play. What I'd rather want to know because that's already a piece of content in the back of my mind is is, is the other kinds of content like I, i'm a news channel right i talk about news i give opinions on news and i give discussions based on broader nintendo topics and i just want to know what you guys want to see more of uh and on top of that what do you want to see less of or not at all i can already tell you i already know people don't want to see switch pro stuff got it trust me message has been received and to everyone on twitter to everyone on YouTube, to everyone on Instagram or TikTok or anywhere that, that I have maybe been really bullheaded about this, I, I don't want you to know how truly sorry I am. I, this, it's a character flaw. I think it's one that a lot of us have, but I know that I have it for sure. And I'm sorry that I've been really inconsiderate and have to realize that I'm no longer this dinky YouTuber that nobody watches or cares about and I can do whatever I want and people leave me alone. I have an audience. I earned that audience. And now I need to rebuild my trust with that audience. So maybe even those that left in the past, maybe they'll consider coming back. Maybe they never will. Maybe they think this is a bunch of fluff and hullabaloo and that I'm not serious. But I am. I always want to do better. And I always want to make content that people want to engage with, want to watch. Uh, and yeah, there's a few things I'm going to be changing uh, already. Uh, one of those things is I'm going to kind of cut back on the swearing during live streams. I know that uh, I, I don't really swear that much during videos, but uh, during live streams, I, I know that I've been dropping a lot of swear words. Uh, and some of it's a joke, but I, I think I'm going to cut back on it for a while. Um, to be honest, it's not part of my normal language all the time. And frankly, it's not needed. We can have a lot of fun without that. So uh, maybe I'll bring it back someday down the line, but... Yeah, I'm not going to worry about that right now. I don't like the disconnect between my live streams and my regular content, that it feels so drastically different. Uh, I, I like it to be more connected. So I don't know. I don't want this to go on any longer. I think I've talked long enough. Hopefully uh, you guys understand why I made this video. And if not, and you didn't make it to the end, oh well. Have a good rest of your day.